What is up guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. We're on our way to 4,000 subs. We're like 20, no, we're like 17 subs away from uh, 3,090, which is pretty awesome. So I appreciate all you guys. Today we're going to be doing the Giselle showcase. Now, she is not fully molded, but I already pre-recorded some games in Arena for you. And honestly, not going to lie, I really enjoy this unit. Um, I only have a little bit of mole in her. She's only got the plus four into her frame of light. I need to max mole this and then the S2 and potentially the S3. I might just plus 15 her because I did triple S her. Her artifact right now is um, plus 22. I can get this to plus 27, but I need uh, more exp in the artifact, which should give me a, a quite bit more attack. So I'm looking to be around 4.5. 4.6 attack maybe higher when i'm done i still gotta do a few things with her gear for example roll off the health for critical damage roll off the effect resistance for critical damage roll off this health for some attack percents just some basic touch up in the gear and maybe even chase for a new set of uh boots with speed crit chance critical damage but at higher rolls right so i have a little bit of adjusting to do in her, in her gear but with that being said i she is pretty impressive to me. Um, she's going to be very good in Guild Wars. I want to use her in RTA whenever she's max molded. And whenever I start doing, you know, videos for RTA, I do plan on drafting her. Now, the thing is, this unit can either win you the match or lose you the match, depending on, you know, who you're fighting, what you're planning to fight her into. Just be aware that she does do a lot of damage and she has potential to get two early kills for you if you draft her properly and with the right setup. I've been using her with other damage dealers like Zahawk. Legit minimum damage or increase. So whenever I do, you know, press the S2 of Zahawk, instead of getting like a 14% increase, because mine's only at, um, if I get my Zahawk real fast to show you, mine isn't plus five on the Mola here. So she's getting a 14% increase. But since the way her passive works, uh, she's actually getting 22% um, increase or something close to that. So we're going to go over a kit. I'll give my on the slots on her and then we'll go into the showcase. I already pre-recorded it. I wasn't talking. I was just playing and messing with her and I was pretty happy with the results with minimal Mola. So let's go ahead and talk about Giselle. So her S2, uh, Lintistic Wisdom, these words, uh, amplifies the effect of combat readiness increases that the uh, cast receives by 50%. At the start of turn has a 70% chance to dispel one buff. When you max this out, it'll give you 100% cleanse. Now, there is something you should note. This is not a 15% increase on her stacked um, self. So this, this isn't 50% plus whatever, right? This is more so, if I pull up the calculator here, I'll give you an example. When I boost her with the Hawk, the 15% times, I think, 7.5, which would be the max of it. So it'd be like, it would be 15 um, plus 7.5, which would be, Jesus, I'm really bad at this. 15 plus 7.5. 0.5, which would be 22.5 at a max, uh, whenever you do max out as a hawk CR push, right? Because she's only getting 50% of the initial boost, so keep that in mind. Pretty strong passive. Uh, it does make her where you can build her around the speed with my style of build play. I do like this speed because I do use her with Zahawk. I do use her with Ning Ning. I do use her with, you know, pretty awesome CR boosters. But I do want her a bit faster. So if I do draft her with Ning Ning and they ban Ning Ning, I can still fall on Zahawk and still get her a pretty decent, sizable CR boost for her to take her turn, right? Just a, just a little bit of a S2 breakdown of how that works. It's 50% of the current boost. So the bigger the CR boost, the bigger the boost this will get by uh, benefiting you, right? Now let's go into her S3. Attacks the enemy with a light, uh, with light before increasing attack of the caster uh, and the ally with the highest attack, except for the caster for two turns. When the enemy is not an elite or boss monster, damage sharing effects are ignored. When the enemy is defeated, grants an extra turn to the caster. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I wish they would change this. Forget buffing, except forget buffing another unit, right? Just forget it. I wish it was just increases attack before attacking. That way she was self-sustaining on this, right? On the attack increase. I would really, really appreciate it instead of her also boosting some other random attacker on the team. Because most likely you're not going to need it anyway. It's nice, but it's just like whatever, right? For how I use her, it's pretty good. But like still, I just prefer it if she would just boost her own attack before attacking. 
That'd be the only change that I'd make to her S3. Because it's kind of like, oh god, now I have to find a CR booster that also gives me an attack buff. Because she won't boost her own attack until after she takes the turn. It's a really stupid little niche nitpick, but it is what it is. The grants extra turn after kill is really nice. Now, uh, whenever you do S3 and you kill, you can go in your S1. Normally, you do want to soul burn this. Uh, this is why I'm rocking her light of frame. We'll break that down in a second. Um, so, attacks the enemy and increases combat readiness of the ally with the highest attack, except for the caster by 10%. Damage dealt increases proportional to the target's current health ratio. So whenever you do max this out, you get a little bit of extra CR in there. I think it's 15%. So we do, you do want to plus 15 this. And also when you when soul burn this, you get increased damage. So this will help you guarantee the kill. Now the reason why I like her artifact on her the best of all of them is because this kind of pairs well with her S3, S1 combo. When attacking with a single attack, increases damage dealt by... I think this will be... Um, I think it will be 15% when mine's plus 27. So I'm going to say 15 to 16% when the enemy is defeated by a uh, single attack grant gains 10 souls at the start of the next turn. The effect upon defeating an enemy can only be activated once. So this is like her initial burst. So you get the kill through S3, you get 10 souls, and then you're able to soul burn her S1. I do think this is her best in slot because this will guarantee you at least the follow up of the burn effect. So I do think that is her best in slot, which is why I really wanted to chase for some dupes. Now, when it comes to her basic like stats, you're looking for about 4.5 to 5,000 attack. Uh, anywhere between 150 to 170 speed is ideal, depending on what type of Sierra boosters you're using her with. I'm using her with Zahawk, so I need a bit faster speed on her, just because the CR boost isn't that much bigger than, um, like, it wouldn't be that much, uh, of, like, the initial push wouldn't be that big, right? It would be just 22.5% when he's, whenever he's S2, he's plus 5, or max mullet, right? Where, when you run, with, run her with, like, bigger CR boosters, like, Ning Ning, you can drop it a little little lower, like 160 if you wanted to, right? Depends on, like, what you're using her for and how you're utilizing her CR pushing mechanic. For crit chance, as close to 100% as possible, and then for critical hit damage, uh, between 320% to 350, I think is ideal for her. Uh, whenever I do edit my gear, I'll be able to get this probably 340 whenever I'm done editing completely. So... With my gear, I have something like this. Attack, speed, crit chance. This is going to get rolled to critical hit damage to boost this up. Her, her helmet is crit chance, crit damage, speed, attack. Her chest is also HP, speed, uh, crit chance. I plan on re-rolling the effect resistance to critical damage to boost this up a little bit higher. Her neck is replaceable. I think I'll just get a new one because I want more stats. Or I could just roll attack in this and keep this. And... Um, you know, lean towards the speed, and then for the ring, it's attack percent, speed, crit chance, critical damage, and then I definitely want a new pair of attack percent boots, so it'd be attack percent, speed, crit chance, crit damage, and maybe flat attack, to so just utilize as much as I can in my uh, kit to boost this attack up as high as possible with while boosting up this critical damage. She needs a lot of critical hit chance, or, or she needs a 100% critical hit chance if possible, as close to 5k attacks possible and as high as you can go on critical hit damage, as close as you can get to 350, it'll be better. Whenever I'm done re-rolling her stuff and modding it, it should be like 340, 335, somewhere around there where it's good enough. I just have to boost up that attack a little bit higher and, uh, you know, level up this as, as high up as possible to get the uh, attack and the basic stats, right? So that's, that's what I'm chasing. Now, when it comes to things that she's horrified of, she's scared of anti-crit units, so like the ends, um, so like, she's scared of this, right? She's scared of this, increases hit critical hit resistance, horrified of units with that. Um, she's kind of scared of, I think, Senya, because Senya has a, uh, S2 that makes it to where she's harder to crit. She's got that critical hit resistance by 35%. That can be kind of scary. Like, she's scared of things that she can't crit. Also, since she is a green unit, she's kind of scared of red units. So, scared of Edward, scared of Roz, scared of just, like, typical red units. However, since there's not many red units, I would say in the meta outside of, like, Edward, Roz, and maybe, like, Fire Quirk. There's some more, but there's there's fewer red units in the meta than there are blue units. She She's in an okay spot. She's not in a perfect spot. She's just in an okay spot. Um, team comps you like to pair her up with. I personally really like running her with Zahawk because Zahawk's able to soul boost her and give her that attack. And then she's able to soul boost him back up into the place so they kind of benefit off each other, but they're both green, which can be pretty risky. 
In theory, you could use her with Landy, but the Landy doesn't give her attack buff. You can run her, run her with one of her BFFs, which is going to be units like Ningning, because whenever Ningning boosts her, she's boosting her up quite a bit by um, 30%, which is kind of nice. It's a 15% higher than Sahak, so Ningning is a really good match with her because she's also increasing her attack. But for the most part, stuff like that. Shit, you can even run her with um, Moon Bunny if you want to, because on her S3, she increases combat readiness and increases attack. So, you know, there's a lot of options for, uh, for you know, Giselle to get the proper support. It just depends on what you have in your account. And that's the main thing, right? She just needs really weird stuff to make work. She wants the attack boosting and CR boosting as a combination together since she's not giving herself the initial attack buff herself, right? So with that being said, I think I broke her down as well as I could. We're going to go ahead and showcase off this Giselle in Arena, and whenever I do Mola her, I'll come back and we'll do a revisited video when she's max Mola to see the difference between the damage of her S1 and S3. I expect a lot of the big, big, big differences whenever you max Mola her. So thanks for watching, and uh, enjoy the Arena Showcase.